finally, some good news for the South African consumer. The CPI, or Consumer Price Index, that measures monthly price changes for a range of consumer products is at its lowest in two years. However, while the inflation barometer has dropped to 4.7%, we cannot ignore the ever-present challenges of load shedding locally and also the stickiness of global inflation and the stubbornness of central banks when it comes to holding the line on high interest rates. I'm Jeremy Maggs. This is No Ordinary Way. Wednesday. It's an in-depth look at what's driving markets, shaping the economy, changing the game. To tell us more about what's behind the CPI decrease and what this means for consumers and business confidence levels in South Africa, we're joined by Investec economist Lara Hodes. Lara, welcome back to No Ordinary Wednesday. Maybe a good place to start is with the CPI that steadily dropped in recent months and is now within the Reserve Bank's target range of 3 to 6%. Now, if I've got this right, much of it has been attributed to the tight monetary policy by the governor, Lesetja Khanyako, and his team. First of all, do you agree? And secondly, what other contributing factors might be at play? So hi, Jeremy. Raising rates has, of course, played its part in curbing demand, supporting downward pressure on prices. Additionally, recent lower readings have been supported by base effects, with CPI reaching 7.8% in July last year, which proved to be the peak for the inflation trajectory currently in SA. Additionally, food inflation, which makes up a significant portion of the CPI basket, has benefited from the contraction in agricultural commodity prices globally. And we also have seen some downwards pressure from fuel price cuts. So, Laura, I'm starting to wonder now whether it's too soon to celebrate. Some experts have viewed this decline as a sign that we are turning the inflation corner. Is it too soon to start thinking in that respect? And do you expect the inflation rate to cool down any further as we get into the back end of 2023? So notably, July, uh, we saw CPI come out at 4.7%, which was actually below consensus expectations and is very close to the midpoint of the inflation targeting band and has been over the last few months supported by high base effects. July seeing that inflation peak of 7.8%. We expect inflation to actually increase moderately in August and this to continue over the fourth quarter of 2023 as the support from high statistical base effects wear out. We are projecting an average CPI reading of around 5.8% for this year. And then we see that falling to around 4.5% in 2024. Although we must remember that a number of upside risks remain, which include the RAND, the oil price, and increasing global food commodity prices. So there are those upside risks, but we are seeing it move towards the midpoint of the targeting band by next year. Laura, let's reference impact now, if we can. Fair to say that many South Africans are feeling the pinch. Uh, A little earlier, you referenced food inflation. So what does a favorable CPI number mean for consumer household consumption and expenditure? Yes, yeah, so so just on the food inflation side, we must remember that South Africa is a price taker for most agricultural commodity prices, so highly susceptible to movements in the global agricultural space. The Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN, their food index, which is a measure of the monthly change in international prices of a basket of food commodities, has declined markedly since its peak in March 2022. And while we expect food inflation to decelerate further, there are renewed risks in the global agricultural space. So declining inflation, to answer your question, has offered consumers definitely some reprieve. Real average salaries increased year on year for the first time since September 2021, according to BankServe Africa data. However, interest rates are still elevated, eroding spending power, while consumer sentiment is highly subdued. So this weighs on the propensity to spend. Laura, I want to come back to inflation in just a moment and specifically uh, producer price inflation or PPI. But we can't have this conversation and not look at interest rates. At the last MPC meeting, rates unchanged. There were 10 consecutive hikes preceding that. Monetary policymakers are going to meet again in the next couple of weeks. What kind of sense of expectation do you have? So at this stage, we are pricing in no further hikes this year. And the MPC should look through the 
the temporary expected rise in CPI over the coming few months and not see it as a cause on its own to tighten monetary policy, will ever be scrutinizing Federal Reserve communications and their interest rate movements going forward. Indeed, recent communication from the Fed chair at the Jackson Hole Symposium stressed that they are prepared to raise rates further if appropriate. The Fed's next FOMC meeting is on the 20th of September and ours follows on the 21st. So we'll wait and see. But as I mentioned at this stage, we aren't looking for further hikes this year. All right, let's return out to inflation and the PPI. That number is going to be out soon, if I'm not mistaken. Is there an expectation there? And hopefully uh, wholesalers, manufacturers might see some sense of relief. Yes, so um, PPI has come down quite notably from its very high 18% in July 2022. We're looking for the headline reading to decelerate to below 4% from 4.8% logged in June. Also on base effects, manufactured largely underpinned by a further easing in manufactured food price inflation, which we have already seen come down notably. So let's focus a little bit more on the manufacturing sector, if we can, that Purchasing Managers Index. Uh, It's the monthly survey of purchasing managers, particularly in the manufacturing sector that dipped marginally in July. Look ahead for me. So business activity slumped while the new orders index edged lower in July. Indeed, uh, domestic demand remains subdued with both business and consumer confidence falling further into depressed territory in the second quarter while the global manufacturing environment remains unfavorable, weighing on export potential. The downturn in the Eurozone's manufacturing sector intensified at the beginning of Q3 23, according to S&P Global. We definitely expect the index to remain in contractionary territory in August, as business activity and new orders likely remain depressed. Although load shedding stages did ease somewhat, In August, the domestic environment remains very fragile while conditions in the global manufacturing sector remain subdued. All right, we're going to continue this conversation in just a moment. Before we do that, just a quick reminder that a new episode of No Ordinary Wednesday drops every fortnight. Please don't miss it. It's pretty easy to find us. All you need to do is subscribe to Investec Focus Radio SA wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like the channel, please take a moment to rate us. Let's continue our conversation now with Lara Hodes and let's look at confidence levels now in the country, Lara, particularly business confidence. Drop in Q2 with 73% of businesses dissatisfied with current conditions. So what were the key factors negatively impacting business confidence and leading on from that then, which sectors were hardest hit? Okay, so I think the... Persistent challenges that we've had in this country, including load shedding, logistical constraints, amongst a number of other structural challenges, continue to weigh on optimal activity, while a subdued global environment, on the other hand, continues to impede export potential. So if you look at the Q2 business confidence numbers, a few of the sectors, notably wholesalers, retailers, and new vehicle dealers, confidence greatly reduced amongst these categories. And the within the manufacturing sector, respondents remain highly negative and confidence remained at a markedly low 17. And your expectations for the third quarter? We definitely expect confidence to remain subdued in the third quarter of the year, may be picking up modestly as the intensity of load shedding is eased. However, in order for business confidence to pick up notably, the hastened implementation of key reforms is imperative. Laura, the business picture, I imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong here, would be very similar to that of consumer confidence. So how are South Africans feeling about the economy at present? Does general sentiment then reflect what business is feeling? Yes. So everything that's happening domestically, globally, definitely weighs on sentiment of consumers as well. So we saw in Q223, the FNBBR Consumer Confidence Index dropped to minus 25. Consumers remained highly constrained dealing with the elevated cost of living and an extremely high unemployment rate, which is still hovering above 32%. 
The effect of SA's interest rate hike cycle has been keenly felt by consumers, subduing confidence. And additionally, as I mentioned, although the intensity of load shedding has eased somewhat, it continues to weigh heavily on households, affecting sentiment. And then let's try and wrap all of this up. Everything that we've discussed today weighs heavily on GDP. The International Monetary Fund projecting uh, real GDP growth at 0.1% in 2023 with persistent electricity issues. You've referenced those already, weaker commodity prices and volatile global factors. Do you have a forecast over the medium and the long term? Yes. So just to go back a step in the short term, we've got a slightly more optimistic forecast than the IMF. I mean, slightly. We've recently revised our forecast up marginally to 0.3% from 0.2% for this year after better than expected performance of some of the key sectors in the second quarter and a lowering in the intensity of load shedding. We don't see the GDP rate, however, rising above 1.5% next year or the following year, with a number of domestic challenges impeding optimal growth. And we expect GDP to only reach around 2% by 2027. And that's where we are going to leave it. Uh, Lara Hodes, thank you very much for your time on this edition of No Ordinary Wednesday. Just an invitation to join us again in a fortnight as we continue to explore money trends shaping your world. If you haven't yet added us to your podcast feed, uh, pretty simple. Search for Investec Focus Radio SA wherever you get your podcasts and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, goodbye from me, Jeremy Maggs, and the entire Focus Radio team. The views expressed are those of the contributors at the time of publication and do not necessarily represent the views of the firm and should not be taken as advice or recommendations. Investec Limited and subsidiaries, authorized financial service providers, registered credit providers, and long-term insurer.